everybody. I'd like to talk to you today about a piece of equipment that I find very useful. It's my, my industrial inspection microscope. And I use this uh, not just to take a look at what's going on with some of my circuit boards and, and some of my, my intricate parts, but I actually use it for soldering small components. Uh, as you can tell, I, I have glasses now. Uh, this, 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 uh, this world of electronics is getting smaller and smaller, and I find it difficult to, to get in and see some of these small components. So, uh, you know, I was on the hunt uh, before, before I ended up working at home uh, for a microscope that I was going to use at work. I had been using a, uh, an optical scope for quite some time, and I found it very restricting. I couldn't get under it very well. It was very limited in its, its field of view and, um, you know, great power on it. I could zoom right in and, and you know, infinite resolution when it comes to the optics. Uh, but, you know, I couldn't capture any video. I couldn't I couldn't take a picture to show my boss, you know, what, what I was looking at. And uh, definitely not being able to get a soldering iron underneath it was uh, problematic. And so... Uh, when I came home to work uh, a couple months ago, the the opportunity was there for me to purchase a a elect, electronic uh, microscope. Now, the the ones that I was looking at at work, they were I didn't really want to cheap out and spend a couple few hundred dollars. I, I thought you know we should we should definitely buy something that we're we're going to be able to. To use uh, very, very well and, and would serve our purposes. Uh, you never want to purchase something uh, for the for your business that you have to uh, then put on a shelf and buy a new one because uh, you know this one didn't quite do the trick. Uh, but being on a very strict budget here at home, uh, this one this one kind of fit the bill. And so I was looking for some, some specific things when I picked this one up. Uh, so I realized that 1.3 megapixels was a little bit light, uh, but it did output at 60 frames per second, which was something that I thought was really important. If you get down to 25, uh, 30, it, it, it's okay, uh, but any lower than that, and you really have trouble trying to solder underneath it because because it, it's jittery. Uh, I wanted to be able to at least output to uh, HDMI, so uh, HD would be fine, so 1080p would serve my purposes. Uh, I didn't need to go all the way to 4K, that'd be nice, but it's not the end of the world. Originally, I was looking at uh, about 130 something dollars, and it did pretty much everything I wanted uh, with one exception. I couldn't capture video with it. And so in order to, to get around that, what I did was I purchased uh, this little uh, USB 3 HDMI game capture card. And that's, that's what I do to capture, capture my video. And I'll do a review on that separately, but this is a fantastic little piece of kit. Um, now, since I've purchased this, you can see, uh, you know, I tell you that, that I purchased this for $136. Um, they, the price has doubled. The price has doubled, and I, I don't know why. Uh, and the reason I don't know why is when I do a web search, I can find the exact same unit, and it, rain, it ranges in price from here's $228 uh, right down to 149 So my suggestion is to shop it out. Uh, now, as, I, as, I'm, as I'm talking through this, there's a couple couple little things that you need to be aware of. One is you'll notice here that they are showing uh, this image of both the VGA and the HDMI hooked up. Uh, that doesn't work. I found that out the hard way. I had the VGA hooked up to my monitor. I had the I had the uh, HDMI going to my video capture, and uh, it was glitching. So because of the my video capture has has a uh, a pass through. I just connected that uh, to uh, DVI on my on my 24 inch monitor, and it worked fantastic. Um, the base not really worth it. The light ring, 
you have to have some light, so the light ring is definitely worthwhile. Some of these other ones that you'll see on here, uh, for example, you can purchase just the camera. Uh, be aware that if you buy the camera, you are going to have to also buy some optics with it. And, you know, you get what you pay for there. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's again, for, you know, less than, less than $300 delivered with everything in. Um, if you're going to do any soldering of anything smaller than, than a dip package, um, you should consider this. Okay, so I'm giving this product a thumbs up. Um, it's not for everybody, I get that, and especially if you're just starting out. But compared, let's compare it over here to this uh, this 1080p, uh, two megapixel. You know, I haven't looked at it, but mm, no. All right. So here's what you get in the kit. As you can see, we have our our main unit, the uh, camera with the optics. This is a hundred to one, uh, and um, it's reasonable optics. The uh, the main unit itself, uh, you can see here. I have the HDMI hooked up. There's some uh, menu buttons, power, what have you. There's also a VGA output and your power. There is no USB, and that's that's okay for me um, because I I have it hooked up uh, directly to to my LG uh, monitor here. Also with this, you get a LED ring. Now this uh, unfortunately uh, doesn't doesn't yield the best results because because of the light off of it uh, is very very bright and intense, a little bit on the blue side, and it tends to not have uh, a great effect because of the shining off of it, and so it, a polarized filter on on your optics would be better, but like I say, the ideal thing with this isn't that it's a fantastic camera. It isn't that it, it's it's the best that you're going to get, but it's the best you're going to get for the cost. Now, uh, the way that this is intended to work is you have the, the this rod screws on to to this base, and then your your camera slides on onto that, and uh, it sits like so. The issue is that unless you have a very small part, um, this tends to get in the way. So what I did was I, I simply made a quick little base up, uh, took, my, took my rod and mounted it uh, to, to my base and then mount my camera to that. What this allows me to do is to have my camera sitting up at a much higher distance and still be able to work on my ESD mat so I don't have to worry about uh, static uh, during, during working. And as you can see, I can allow it to uh, zoom right down and uh, we, we can get a very tight uh, image. And so uh, here we go. I'm going to show you uh, this old Motorola chip uh, is great because I can actually um, I can I can look in the window. This is an old uh, EEPROM, uh, so it's uh, the way that this this used to work is you could uh, erase it by uh, exposing it to UV, UV radiation, which we have lots here. So this is obviously obviously well uh, well cleared of any program that was on there. Uh, but we can we can zoom right in and take a look at the transistors and believe it or not it actually does say Motorola on the on the actual die and so yeah okay And so here we are, we're all set up again. Uh, this is my typical configuration. 
as you can see we we have it set up that I'm looking at this uh, TSSOP uh, part this little L, uh, linear technologies uh, component and uh, it, it makes it so that I can not only inspect it but uh, to to actually solder I, uh, my uh, my eyesight has gotten poor enough in the past uh, couple years that I rely on this for soldering you know most most components these days uh, that are smaller than your typical dip package um, and just partially because I'm lazy it uh, definitely definitely works out well I have my my scale set up so we're looking at uh, we have about uh, 25 26 centimeters of, of clearance to to our uh, to to our, our optics and if we put that up here on the screen uh, and take a look at it we have one centimeter one centimeter is pretty close to uh, 10 centimeters on here so we have about a 10 to 1 uh, at this distance okay here we are we're zoomed all the way in and uh, as you can see uh, once you get too close the the, uh, the little ring light doesn't quite do the trick and that's why I say it's not it's not the best uh, for for lighting but uh, if we take a look at it now our magnification we're looking at uh, one millimeter is about we'll call it 78 uh, millimeters so that's uh, that's pretty good that's uh, 78 to 1 it's uh, you know believable that it's 100 to 1 uh, definitely uh, but uh, and we could we could definitely zoom in closer all right so there's that uh, that chip I had to I had to remove the light ring to get some more light uh, down on it uh, but there you go that's that's looking at those pins uptight and personal uh, as you can see uh, we had already determined that we have about a hundred to one and so each of those pins on my uh, 24 inch monitor here yeah 24 inch monitor are measuring about uh, two centimeters wide all right if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you'd like to be informed of more videos that i post and the you know i seem to be getting some positive feedback on on this type of review so i'm planning on going through all of the equipment that i purchased for for my lab in the past little while the new stuff anyway and uh, hopefully you find it helpful and useful okay. thanks and have a great day